Good morning out there in Facebook world. Today is Pentecost Sunday. We're going to start off worship. We read about these stories where God appears to people in dreams and speaks to people in dreams. And this is a song uh, that was in my head one morning when I woke up from a dream early last year.
and welcome to everybody watching on Facebook. As Chris said, this is Pentecost Sunday. That's why we have the beautiful red banners to remind us of the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, today we're celebrating the birth of the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we'll be hearing that story and seeing what we can learn about what it means to follow the Spirit and let the Spirit fill our lives and lead our ministry and our, our discipleship. Um, before we dive into... Um, our opening hymn, and we have the Prairie Wind Trio singing today, which is just a wonderful joy. Um, I'd like to invite Dwayne Davis to come forward. He's the chair of Staff Parish Relations Committee. He has an important announcement to share. And Dwayne, you can use this mic. Okay. <clears throat> Thank, <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Michael. Uh, early, <clears throat> excuse me. Early last week, uh, Renell Eights contacted me with an exciting announcement from their standpoint, but a loss from ours, and that is that she has accepted the position of head pastor at the Rossville United Methodist Church. She's going to be starting that July 1, and so uh, <clears throat> we've all gotten to know the Eights family, Chris and Renell have done many things in the church. Uh, and of course, this is something that has been developing. As you all know, uh, they've both gone through the training to be licensed local pastors. And now uh, Renella is going to take advantage of that and has a wonderful opportunity. So I think you, you all would join me uh, in wishing them well, the Eights family. And, uh, of course, Chris is still here, but Renell will be on, on up the road a little ways in July. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be praying for them and looking for great things from Renell's ministry there. Um, the uh, uh, transition team that's been planning for Pastor Michael's leaving will also put together a way to uh, commemorate and say thank you to Renell. And... Um, of course, when uh, our new pastor, Pastor Mitch, gets here, the SPPR will be meeting with him and figuring out how to cover the bases that Rennell is leaving open. So that's, uh, that's something, another transition in this time of many transitions for us. All right. Thank you, Dwayne. Um, is that Rennell out there? Is she out there right now? Come on in. Congratulations to Renell. You want to come on up here? Yeah. You know, these online services have been about 30 minutes, but today we're going all 60, trust me. We got a baptism, we got lots of great music. All right, I'm going to have you stand four feet over there. Yeah. Normally I would give you a hug and, and, and lay on hands to, to uh, bless you and say a prayer, but uh, we're trying to uh, be respectful and be careful. But we want to celebrate you, celebrate your ministry, celebrate this exciting new step in your development as a, a minister of the gospel. Uh, we're so proud of you. Uh, you've done such wonderful work here. And uh, it's, it's just great to see you continuing to grow in your gifts and grow in your leadership. And so let's just say a quick word of prayer for Renau. Lord, I invite you to uh, help us to celebrate all the work that Renau has done here in the life of this church, the relationship she's built uh, the way she has shared the gospel in her words and deeds, and the way she has served you with dedication and humility and with passion. And we're excited for her as she continues to grow in the gifts you've given her, and we look forward to seeing her blossom in her ministry at Rossville United Methodist Church. We know she will be a blessing to them. As we grieve our loss and as we are sad, we know that we will still be friends and remain in contact with her and see her. Uh, but it is a change. It is a transition. So, Lord, we ask for your comfort and blessing on us as we say goodbye and celebrate her ministry. And we ask for your blessing upon Renell and upon the church in Rossville, that this may be a time of uh, new ministry together, where you will guide them and bless them and renew and revitalize that church through the gifts you've given to Renell. In Christ's name, we pray these things. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, it is Pentecost Sunday, as we've been saying, and um, all the prayers and music, everything today is really focused and geared towards celebrating the work of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to begin with an opening prayer and then invite the Prairie Wind Trio. You might as well go ahead and start working your way up here. 
And let me pray for you. O Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Come as the wind and lift our hearts. Come as the fire and inspire us. Come as the dew and refresh our souls. Convict, convert, and consecrate us to grow in your grace and to fill our mouths with praise. Alleluia and amen. All right, let's sing.
I'd like to invite the Schmitz family to come forward. I have you stand on that side. This is Jenna and Andy Schmitz and their daughter, Elena. And since we have the COVID pandemic, we're going to have to use a water gun for... <laughs> you ready, girl? I know. They said, do you want to use a water gun? And I said, well, I think that's a little disrespectful, but my son happened to have this blaster, so I thought it would be good for a gag. All right. <laughs> They have a good sense of humor, so I appreciate that. So we're going to do things a little differently today. Um, I'm going to invite Andy to place the water on his daughter's head as I say the words of baptism. Um, but let's, uh, let's join together in this service of baptism. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, and one God who is above all, through all, and in all. Through the sacrament of baptism, we receive new people into the church family. They are incorporated into the body of Christ. The waters of baptism symbolize the washing away of sin and the receiving of God's forgiveness. In baptism, we are made one with Christ in his death and resurrection, and we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The sacrament of baptism is an instrument of God's grace offered to us freely. We do not deserve or earn God's grace and love. We simply receive God's grace as a gift. So Jana and Andy, as the parents of Elena, I ask you, will you raise her as a disciple of Jesus Christ by your teaching and example, by bringing her to worship, and by participating in the ministries of the church? If you will, say, we will. All right. And now to you, the congregation, and it's good to have a handful of you here today to represent. You're representing the whole church, and it's important. Part of baptism is not only the parents' promise, not only... Uh, inviting the Spirit to, to bless her and to be part of this. But the important part is the congregation has a promise, has a part to play in this. So I ask you just, first of all, to look at this precious child of God. She's so sweet, and she's pulling her mom's hair there. <laughs> she's having a good time. She is a gift from God to this community. And so I ask, will you surround her with your love and your support and your prayers? Will you set an example for her? by how you live your life, by your words and your deeds? And will you shape her by providing ministries that will nurture and teach her? If you will, say, we will. We will. Thank you. I made sure the water was not cold. It's nice and warm. So it's not too shocking. Oh, I got her attention. You want to play in the water? Yeah. All right, let's ask for God's blessing. Holy and living God, we thank you for the gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all of life. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. In water, your son Jesus Christ received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ. And so, Lord, we ask that you sanctify this water by the power of the Holy Spirit that those who are washed with it may be renewed in your image and walk in the fullness of life with the risen Christ. Amen. All right, you can move a little closer. And Andy, I invite you to place your hand in the water. You put that on Elena's head as I pray. Elena Louise Schmitz, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let's pray. May the power of God work within you that having, having been washed with water and born of the Spirit, you may experience the freedom and fullness of new life and live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a joy. Thank you for asking for this opportunity. It's a, a wonderful opportunity to, to have a baptism near the end of my ministry here. This is a certificate for you guys. I'm just going to let you pick that up. And congratulations. I'm proud of you guys. Way to go, Elena. You did great. <laughs> Yay! Sweet girl. Thank you. All right.
All right, so we're entering into our time of prayer together. Um, there is a full list of joys and concerns that if you are interested in having that emailed to you, just contact the office and they'll be happy to do that. I'm not going to read all the names. Uh, there are quite a few people who are fighting cancer, dealing with long-term health conditions, who've lost loved ones and there's births and uh, gradu graduates to celebrate. Uh, but there's a few things I want to lift up in particular. First of all, Rennell Aits is a joy of her new appointment to Rossville United Methodist Church, and we'll continue to pray for her and for our church family. Um, Chuck Partridge lost his mother, Leanna Partridge, this week. I'm going to keep his family in our prayers. Um, Christy Borner is going to have surgery on June 11th to drain fluid and have an oblation. She's been having issues with her heart. Some of these surgeries that have been finally scheduled have been ones that have been being put off because of the pandemic. So we're excited that Christy will have this opportunity to finally have surgery on June 11th. Keep her in your prayers. Linda Jolly will have prayers uh, uh, surgery on Tuesday, June 2nd. Uh, they're going to remove part of her lower left lung um, as her treatment for cancer, and we'll just keep her in our prayers. Um, Joy-wise, Kendra Hammond was selected as the K-Man Student Athlete of the Year, not just the month of the week, but for the whole year. Uh, for playing three sports all four years of high school and, and keeping a very high grade point average. And uh, we just add that to the list of amazing accomplishments Kendra has uh, achieved. And uh, you know how much we uh, are proud of you, Kendra, and, uh, and we love you and look forward to seeing you continue to uh, excel and achieve in life. So congratulations. That's a wonderful honor. Uh, I'm just checking my notes. Um, I do want to share, I, I know last week was a little confusing. I wasn't here. Um, my mom was brought home from the hospital and put on hospice, and um, it actually was a real blessing. She's been fighting for six years with amyloidosis. It's a very rare disease that they cannot cure. And uh, she was looking at just continued months of being in the hospital with infections and suffering, and uh, there's nothing more they could do. Um, so she made the choice, and it was a powerful example of someone uh, taking control of their life and deciding that she was ready to come home and to be surrounded by her family and to go on hospice. And I have to say, it was a real blessing. Um, and so we are grateful that we had that time with my mom, and she died on Monday about 4.10, uh, surrounded by her family. And um, it was a, I'll cherish that time forever, that week with my mom. And, and know that her suffering has ended. So ultimately, it's a, a relief that she's not suffering. Uh, but obviously, we're grieving and sad. So um, if I'm a little out of it, which you've already seen, I am a little out of it, and I'm a little uh, scatterbrained, it's because my brain's kind of mush. But I really wanted to be here. I really wanted to preach today, and I really wanted to be with my church family online and the few who are here in person. And just thank you for all those who have prayed for us and, and sent cards and flowers and, and the outpouring has been wonderful. And we feel that love and we appreciate it. All right. Um, the other thing I want to lift up is just sort of the state of our country. I think it's been a really rough week. It's been really awful. And as we continue to be concerned about the COVID-19 pandemic and the number of people suffering or who have died, uh, the economic free fall with so many people out of work, uh, 40 million is the last number I heard. And then obviously there's been, uh, there was the murder in Minneapolis of George Floyd and just all the conflict and, and riots and uh, just the sense of anger and hurt. Uh, and there's a lot of division going on in, in the life of our country. And so now more than ever, we need God in our lives, right? We need the church. We need the Holy Spirit. And so I, I just turn to God with all these concerns about our country and the world and seek God's wisdom and blessing and guidance. Okay, I think um, that's what I have for now. I know that there are more joys and concerns. Feel free to post those online on Facebook or to call the office, email the office, and we'll add those to our prayer list for the future. I'm going to invite you to join me in silent prayer. and I have a special pastoral prayer for uh, Pentecost Sunday. But let's pray.
Spirit of God, you are fire and we welcome your flame. You catch us when our heart is fading. You warm us when our love is cooling. You ignite us, you enlighten us, consume us and refine us. Spirit of God, you are water and we submit to your tide. You fill the space we make for you and you shape the lives immersed in you. You cleanse us and refresh us and flow through us and renew us. Spirit of God, you are earth and in you we ground our being. You feed the seeds we plant in you. You strengthen roots laid deep in you. You hold us and sustain us and nourish us and bring life to us. Spirit of God, you are air and to breathe of you is life. You fill the lungs of those who draw on you. You fill the sails of those who wait for you. You carry us, you move us, lift us and caress us. So burn us, fire of heaven, wash us, holy water, grow us, ground of our being, inspire us, breath of God, remake us, great creator, in your elemental image. Amen. Let's join together in the words Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, the Prairie Wind Trio is going to sing, Give Me Jesus.
Thank you so much, Rebecca and Chris and Becky. Normally we want to clap and shout after you guys sing, but that, that was so sacred and just holy and beautiful. Thank you. What a blessing to hear your voices. All right, well, let's uh, turn to the book of Acts and the story of Pentecost. If you want to stand, I invite you to stand. Those of you at home can remain sitting in your couch with your PJs and your coffee and know that that's just fine. We're happy for you. But we miss you. All right. This is uh, chapter 2 of the book of Acts. When When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this word. Amen. All right, please be seated. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to preach today. I was struggling this week, uh, focusing and putting my thoughts together. And I bring that up because um, my wife was an important instrument of the Holy Spirit this week. She encouraged me to keep trying. In fact, I called her from church one day and I said, I'm just, I'm struggling. I can't focus. I can't get this written. She said, come on home, have some dinner, go to bed. It'll be better tomorrow. And she was right. And so I just want to remind all of us, it was a reminder to me that sometimes the Holy Spirit works through people in our lives uh, to encourage us, to inspire us, to, to prompt us. And so I'm grateful for that. And I am glad to be here with you. Let's pray. Almighty God, anoint me with the power of your Holy Spirit that as I preach today, your word may bless and transform those who are listening. Amen. The Holy Spirit is like a strong wind blowing that is propelling a sailboat to glide across the water. The Holy Spirit is like a beautiful dove soaring gracefully through the air, free to change direction, right, untethered. The Holy Spirit is like a wildfire burning away the underbrush to make way for new life. The Spirit is a powerful force. It's an unstoppable force for transformation and for renewal. And the Spirit moves in ways that are mysterious to us and unpredictable and definitely not controlled by us. We don't control the Spirit, we follow the Spirit. And so my question for all of us today, that I'm going to ask you over and over again, so I need my amen chorus, is do you trust the leading of the Spirit? Do you? Yes. All right. Jesus taught his disciples in the Gospel of Luke. You may remember from my sermon series on Luke that the same author wrote Luke and the book of Acts. And the Holy Spirit was an important part of the storytelling from the Gospel of Luke's author's perspective. And in the chapter 12 of the Gospel of Luke, he reminds us that Jesus said to the disciples, whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. In other words, resist or push back or ignore the Holy Spirit. When they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you'll defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that very hour what you ought to say. That's one of the things the Holy Spirit does. It teaches us what is right, what is true, what is life-giving. And as believers, we can trust the Holy Spirit to guide us. To resist the Spirit is one of the gravest sins. And if we do resist the Spirit, it leads to destruction. It leads to death. It's life-taking to push back and to resist. And so this is an important warning to us that We need to listen to the Spirit, and if we trust and move with the Spirit, we are blessed with abundant life. And so I ask you again, do you trust the leading of the Spirit? All right. At the beginning of the book of Acts, before uh, Jesus ascended into heaven, he's speaking to his disciples, and this is what he says. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when Jesus had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while he was going, they gazed upward to heaven. And suddenly two men in white robes stood by them and said, 
Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking toward the heaven? The disciples were stunned into silence, gazing up into heaven. Their eyes were fixed upon the clouds. I imagine them with their mouths gaping open, just like, all right? They were not ready to live in a world where Jesus was gone. They were not ready to receive the Spirit and to live out their calling to be the church, to be the body of Christ in the world. The disciples were stuck in a moment, thinking about the good old days when Jesus was with them. If we desire to follow the Spirit, then we have to let go of the way the things used to be. We have to let go of what is familiar, what is comfortable, what we want, and we have to choose to participate in the new thing the Spirit is doing. As God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, it's one of those passages we love to lift up, but man, it's a good one. The Lord says, do not remember former things or consider the things of old. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way. Right? Where we can't see it. But God says, I will make a way in the wilderness. I will make rivers in the desert. Even though we don't always understand where God is leading us, and we don't understand why, why things are changing, why things are happening, we can trust that God has a plan and God will make a way where we can't see a way. So again, I ask you, do you trust in the leading of the Spirit? So after Jesus left earth, the disciples went to the upper room. They locked themselves behind the doors there. They felt abandoned. They were afraid. The disciples were not ready, again, to trust the Spirit. I wonder, have you ever felt abandoned by God? Have you ever given in to fear and to shame the way they did? Have you ever wanted to just lock yourself behind a door? I've had people say to me, I just want to go to an island forever. I just want to get behind a door. I don't want to see anybody. Life is full of disappointments and pain, and I'm going to hide myself behind a locked door. Many years ago, I was at a preaching conference in Nashville, Tennessee, and I had the blessing of hearing a singer-songwriter named Ashley Cleveland, who led worship for us. She's a very talented singer. Ashley Cleveland writes hit songs for other artists. She has three Grammys. She's not as well-known by many of us, but she is very talented, very successful. She's toured the world with many famous artists, often as a background singer. One of the ones that I remembered that she mentioned was Steve Winwood. In the 80s and 90s, she toured with him. One day when Ashley was leading worship for us, she had her guitar, his acoustic guitar. I mean, I just remember it so vividly. Just her voice and the guitar, and she's singing, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And she's talking about her wandering heart, and bind my wandering heart to thee, Lord, right? And she was overcome with emotion. She had to stop singing. And inspired by the Holy Spirit, Ashley just gave us this powerful personal testimony And I wrote it down because it just knocked my socks off. She said, I am a broken person. I spent most of my life trying to hide it and ignore it and cover it up out of fear and shame. And yet my brokenness would keep coming out in ways that were unhealthy, that were hurtful, that were painful, like a drug addiction. I finally learned the truth that my brokenness is the place where God's grace shines in my life. My brokenness is beautiful. It's a gift. It's a blessing. God's perfect love casts out my fear, and now the Holy Spirit works through my brokenness in creative and powerful ways. Isn't that a cool testimony? Man, that's great. So again, I ask you, do you trust in the leading of the Holy Spirit? Good. We're just getting warmed up. The Spirit put a lot of things on my heart to say today. Usually my sermons are like eight minutes. This is not an eight-minute one. All right, so on Pentecost, the Spirit filled the disciples and transformed them from timid, broken people into powerful, bold preachers who proclaimed the love of God in Christ Jesus. The Spirit gave the disciples the ability to speak in other languages so that everyone could understand God's Word. And the response was amazing. It said, so those who welcomed this message were baptized, just like the baptism we had today. From the very beginning, the church was formed out of baptizing people into the body of Christ. Those who welcomed this message were baptized, and that day, 3,000 people were added. Can you imagine 3,000 people getting baptized on one day? Praise God. 
They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayers. And all came upon everyone because of many wonders and signs that were being done by the apostles. And all who believed were together and had things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. When we respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit, our lives and our church becomes like a magnet, right? Drawing people in towards the love of God. They see that we're not perfect people. It's not about putting on an image of perfect church, perfect people. What they see is broken people doing our best. By God's grace, we're able to be authentic with each other. And that's what's attractive. They see that love and acceptance. We're still able to be genuine, to be real with each other, and still be a community. And that is a gift of the Holy Spirit. This church is a gift, that fellowship, that love, and that that magnet that draws people in towards that love. They're all gifts of the Spirit. So again, do you trust the leading of the Spirit? As I reflect on our shared ministry over the last seven years, I am simply amazed at what has been accomplished by our congregation through the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to take a moment just to highlight a few things and to celebrate those things. Between 2013 and 2020, 216 adults joined this church. That's not even counting the children. So there's about another 100 children. So over 300 people have been drawn to the grace of God that's present here by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are very few churches that have that kind of energy and vitality and growth. And this is definitely something unique and special, and we should give praise to God for that. The average worship attendance was 171 in 2013. And before COVID-19, we were averaging about 280. Financial giving had grown. Annually, it used to be 232,000. Now it's over 400,000. Now, some people would say, well, those are just numbers. That's just money and numbers. No. Those numbers are a sign of something going on in people's lives and their hearts. Lives are being changed and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why people are coming, right? They're being drawn here, worshiping God, giving of their time and their treasure and their talent because of what God is doing. It's not just numbers. It is changed lives. In the last seven years, I have, I went through all my records. I performed 45 baptisms, and with Elena's today, 46, praise God. Um, I presided uh, at 25 weddings, 52 funerals, and there were 35 youth confirmed in this church in the last seven years. That's awesome. We launched some um, new annual ministries and events that we do every year now, like the Leadership Summit that we do every January. The ecumenical Easter sunrise service that we've been doing five miles north of here up on the hill with the crosses, that was something new where we invited the other congregations in the community to join us. Um, The big fall stewardship drive where we invited people to fill out commitment forms where they wanted to use their time and talent and also make a commitment to financially support the church. Those are things we started and really uh, uh, lifted up and enhanced. Uh, We started doing an auction every May to support the youth ministry of our church, and that has grown and grown and grown in ways that are remarkable. And then the other thing that's uh, a ministry I want to celebrate is our mission trips to Guatemala. And we've had five trips, and every one of them has been different and has been a blessing. Um, So those are some of the the bigger things that happen annually that I wanted to celebrate. Uh, We also created a care ministers team. Right now we have 13 people who have been trained, who've been commissioned, and who are sent out into our congregation, into the community, uh, to visit people who are sick or who have lost a loved one or or even who have had a baby or have a joy to celebrate, but also to visit those who are homebound or in nursing homes. And I'm so grateful for the care ministers. We've added more small groups and short-term classes. We've added more service opportunities. And over the last seven years, we've added staff to meet the growing needs of our church. And I don't have enough time. I need a whole other sermon to celebrate all the gifts and the ministries of our staff. But suffice to say, they are very gifted and very dedicated, and we are blessed by them. There's a handful of them here. Um, Some have been with us longer than others. Chris, how long, Chris Day, how long have you been with us? 30, 36 years. Isn't that amazing? Uh, You've been such a blessing to us. 
And one of the legacy ministries that's been such a big part of this community and this church is the Handel's Messiah, which this year is the first year in like 26 years that you haven't had it. Yeah. So that's that legacy, that the music ministry you brought to us, brought to us has been such a great gift. Um, I remember back in March of 2017, we had our big celebration of our 150th anniversary of the founding of this church. And we had a huge worship service and a luncheon. Uh, Trish Oviat just reminded me that she got hired that week. <laughs> and she was like, oh no, what have I gotten myself into? Um, but we had this amazing day. We had the bishop here, the district superintendent. We invited our former pastors here. Uh, of course, we had food and fellowship and wonderful worship. Um, in honor of that milestone, reaching 150 years, we did several things. We put in that history wall that's in our narthex. Uh, that is just beautiful. And I was just looking at it this morning and, and reading the poems and the stories. And it's just an incredible legacy, incredible history. We also commissioned a painting of the church, which hangs in the narthex. Um, some of you who maybe have joined the church more recently uh, and maybe haven't looked at those things, I invite you to do that. As well, we added this wooden cross here in the sanctuary. Um, I love that um, it came from wood that was over 100 years old that belonged to some uh, local farmers and pioneers. I like to imagine that it came off a wagon that was brought pioneers here. I, it may have. Leon, do we know? It's, it was in Leon Sylvester's barn, uh, but he cut and uh, donated that and put it up. And to me, that's something, I, I, when I think about the last seven years, that's, that's a really cool highlight. Uh, we celebrated the, the ministry of the Messiah Chorus. I also, there's some other legacy ministries that have been here for decades that have really impacted our community, like the thrift shop that the United Methodist Women run and the food pantry that's supported by the Council of Churches. Those are things that were already here and we continue to enhance and to continue. And I just love, um, I, those are things that I share when I'm talking about this church. I talk about those legacy ministries that are so powerful. In addition to all that, we had a lot of food, right? We've had a lot of potlucks and picnics in the park and in people's yards and at the church. We've had parties and concerts and fellowship events. And along the way, we've also several times reimagined our slogans and our logos and our, our merchandise and all that. And um, it really improved our communication and our marketing. Obviously, Taryn Shepard's a big part of that. Yeah, Taryn Shepard and um, uh, Corey Reeves as well has been a consultant on that. So that those. I'm getting myself in trouble because I'm starting to name names, and I told myself I shouldn't do that. But there's a handful of people here, so I'm doing it anyway. What I want to say is that all of this, and there's a lot more I could celebrate, all of this is a result of the many talented people, the lay people and the staff who work together to accomplish God's vision and mission for our church. Primarily, we should say, to God be the glory. Amen? First and foremost. Our vital church ministries are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to keep that in front of us. And so again, I ask you, thinking about Pentecost, thinking about Ashley Cleveland, thinking about our church, thinking about all these stories I'm telling you about the Holy Spirit, do you trust the leading of the Spirit? Yes. All right. Well, now more than ever, we need the leading of the Spirit. We need to listen to the Spirit. As we face the challenges created by the COVID-19 pandemic, we need God's wisdom and guidance. Not only because of the health crisis and all the people who are sick, who are dying, but the economic crisis, the 40 million people who are out of work, and the social crisis, the painful divisions in our country. We need the blessings of the Holy Spirit. All I think, when I think about all the things going on in the world right now, I just think, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We need you. We need your Holy Spirit. The sin of racism is destructive and terrible. And there's so many ways we need healing and we need peace in our lives. But what I know is that God is with us in this season in the desert as a caring and trustworthy companion. God is the good shepherd who is tending to his flock. And the more we follow the loving guidance of God's rod and staff, the better off we're going to be. So do you trust the leading of the Spirit? Another challenge this congregation is facing right now, obviously, is the transition in pastors. June 7th, next Sunday, will be the last Sunday that I preach and lead worship. Pastor Fritz Clark is going to fill in for the rest of June. And July 5th will be Pastor Mitch Todd's first Sunday. 
I can tell you this. I've known Mitch for 25 years. He is a great pastor and a dear friend. If I had been asked to make a short list of gifted pastors who should come lead Wamego United Methodist Church, he would have been on that very short list. He is a gifted preacher, a talented musician, a talented writer. And I, I know and I believe that you are in good hands with Mitch Todd as your pastor. And so I celebrate that. Still, this season of change is difficult for many of us, especially since we're not able to gather in large groups and to, to talk and talk about how we're feeling and how we're doing. And so I think it's important, at least in this worship service online, to name that sense of loss that's going on with all the change, to acknowledge that saying goodbye is difficult, it's painful, it's sad. And really to allow ourselves time to grieve and allow ourselves time to heal and just to be patient with each other, to be graceful and kind. God has blessed us with seven wonderful years together and I'm always going to cherish that. And you know how much I love you. You know that you have a special place in my heart and that will never change. So now the Spirit is calling me to a new ministry setting with new challenges and with new blessings. And the Spirit is calling this congregation to receive a new pastor and to support that pastor, to surround him with your prayers and love. And I know you will. And his wife, Jan, I, I know you will surround them with your uh, support. And that's a blessing. So with all this going on, do you still trust the leading of the Spirit? Yes. All right. Well, here's what I know for sure. This church has been blessed with tremendous spiritual resources. Tremendous. If you look at the history of this church, you can see how the Spirit's been at work here from the very beginning all the way up to the present. Do you know that Wamigo United Methodist Church was started in a storm? Do you all remember that? I was looking back at the history in some of my notes from when we had our 150th anniversary, and I was reminded that in March of 1867, Methodists from all over Kansas gathered in Manhattan, Kansas, during a severe snowstorm. Some of them were on a train going by here and they, the train had to stop on the tracks till they could clear the snow and get everybody together in Manhattan for annual conference. And at that annual conference, they passed a resolution to start a church, to establish a new church in Wamego, Kansas. And the annual conference supported this church for 13 years by sending the stipend to pay the pastor. Those hardy Methodist pioneers did not let a storm stop them from doing the Lord's work. Right there at the beginning, it's in the DNA of this church. Their vision and generosity planted the seeds that were watered by the Holy Spirit and blossomed to bear the fruit that is the vibrant church we have today. So praise God for that. Over the years, this church has weathered many other storms. The storms of civil war and the world wars and other conflicts. Storms of diseases like the Spanish flu in 1918, polio, scarlet fever, um, I was talking to Ralph White one day on the phone. I had called to talk to Ralph and Marianne, and he was sharing with me the year that they didn't go to Hutchinson for State Fair because they weren't sure how polio was being spread and everybody was nervous, and so they were canceling things and staying home. And he also was telling me about people having scarlet fever and being in quarantine, and uh, they put them, keep them separate from everybody else. And he was like, you know, we've been through this before. It's not the first time our country's had to do this. That was helpful for me to have some perspective the church and our country has been through this before, and God was with us then, and God is with us now. And you think about how our church also survived many economic downturns, right? The Great Depression in the 30s, the recession in 2008, and other storms. For 153 years, this church hasn't just survived, though. It has thrived. Amen? Um, as I was looking at the history wall and looking at uh, the poem that was written by David Bletcher, that's Jolene Lindemuth's father, who was associate pastor here and uh, used to be the visitation pastor he wrote this poem about the history of the church and this caught my attention he said soon they had a house of worship that stood there for many years and the hand of god was guiding them through trials joys and tears right this church has not only survived but thrived for 153 years and one of the things that really astonishes me about the history of this church is the fact that about 15 years ago, you tore down the walls of the sanctuary and expanded it to make room for more people. I have to tell you, there are very few congregations that would make such a bold and dramatic change to their sacred sanctuary, one built out of stone, nonetheless, and stained glass windows, 
and to tear out the walls and to make it bigger so that more people could come to know Jesus Christ and to hear the gospel. That is part of the DNA of this church that has survived all these storms, and not just survived, but thrived. It's in your spiritual DNA as a church. It's who you are. This is a congregation with a history of making bold moves and following the Holy Spirit. So do you trust the Holy Spirit? Do you trust the leading of the Spirit? Isn't this fun? All right, I'm going to close with this. Um, I had a dream back in February. You know, Chris at the very opening said, God speaks to us in dreams. And I thought, man, I'm so glad you said that. Because I knew the end of my sermon was to share with you a dream that God gave me. It was after we had announced that I was being appointed to serve in Hutchinson, Kansas. And my heart and my mind were unsettled. And I'm sure in my sleep, I was trying to work those things out. And I had this dream. It was bizarre. Because I don't ne- generally I don't remember dreams. It was very special that I did. And in the dream, I had left Wamigo for a while. It wasn't clear to me why or how long, but the point was I had left. And I came back in the dream, and when I returned, the church, the congregation, had built on a whole addition to the building. And the leaders of the church were walking me through it and pointing out the walls and the lights and the doors and the classrooms. And I remember being so confused, like, when did this happen? And I remember just being like overwhelmed and even kind of angry, like, what? I don't understand. Like, nobody asked me. Like, you did all this without me? And then I realized, you did all this without me. Yeah. I believe God gave me that dream to set my ego right, to humble me, right? To say, I don't have to be responsible I can release that sense of responsibility you have as a leader of a group. God was saying, you know what? The mission of the Wamigo United Methodist Church is so much bigger than you, Michael, so let it go. It's not all about you. It's not about any one pastor. This church will continue to grow and expand without me because it's who you are. It's in your DNA. You will continue to follow the leading of the Spirit. And so I want you to hear... The words God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah, it's an important reminder for us as we think about the future. The Lord said, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not your harm, to give you a future with hope. So do you trust the leading of the Spirit? Do you trust the leading of the Spirit? I know you're going to be just fine. Praise God. Oh, no.
As we close out worship today, I want to remind you that if you would like to give a financial gift to the church, a tithe or an offering, you can go to wamigoumc.org slash giving, and you can find an opportunity to do that digitally. And we thank you for your faithfulness uh, in giving and supporting the work of the church. Help me to walk by your spirit, Lord. Oh, 
Yeah, I have to say, every moment that I get to play with these folks is a blessing. So, love this band. Thank you, Chris, for your awesome music and your leadership. What a blessing. Well, today was fun. Good to be with a handful of you and all the people at home. Um, hope you have a great week. I'm going to offer a benediction. And then I look forward to uh, talking to some of you by phone or email or text. Um, thank you for those of you who've already sent cards and things. It means a lot. I appreciate it. <sighs> Let's pray. Having been given power by the Spirit, let us go into the world, bringing understanding to those living in despair and freshness of life to those living in death. Amen. No! <laughs> 